When Ana Maria Garcia was growing up in Bogotá, Colombia, and people asked about her parents, she always said that they were divorced and that she lived with her mother. En la escuela, era común escuchar esa misma historia. Era normal ser hija de padres divorciados. Many of her classmates had similar stories, but Ana María's was a little different. Yo no conocía a mi padre, pero nunca me preguntaban por eso, y yo tampoco lo contaba. But when Ana María decided to try to meet her father, she would discover that she technically had two, dos papás, and looking for her real father would be nothing like what she expected. Bienvenidos and welcome to the Duolingo Spanish Podcast. I'm Martina Castro. Every episode, we bring you fascinating, true stories to help you improve your Spanish listening and gain new perspectives on the world. The storyteller will be using intermediate Spanish, and I'll be chiming in for context in English. If you miss something, you can always skip back and listen again. And we also offer full transcripts at podcast.duolingo.com. Today's story... Mis dos papás, my two dads, as told by Ana María García and written by Sally Palomino. Nunca cuestioné la historia oficial sobre por qué no conocí a mi papá de niña. Ana María was content with what her mother, Inés, had told her. Her father's name was Luis Carlos García. Her parents had been married for six years and they had separated a couple of months before Ana María was born, when he left to be with another woman. Pero con el paso del tiempo, cuando entré en la adolescencia, empecé a querer saber más sobre quién era este hombre. When Ana María was 16, she decided she needed to find her father and meet him face to face. Mi mamá no me ayudaba y no me decía nada sobre él. Ella tampoco tenía fotos de él, y eso me parecía bastante extraño. Empecé a buscar su nombre en las noticias y en los obituarios. Internet access was limited in those days. It was the late 90s, and tracking someone down wasn't as simple as it might be today. Yo le decía a mi mamá que quería encontrar a mi papá. Le expliqué que era algo que necesitaba hacer, pero ella no me decía nada. Busqué durante dos largos años y no encontré nada. Pasé muchas noches triste y sin dormir. One of those sleepless nights, Ana María remembered something that might help her in her search. Me acordé de que mi abuela tenía una agenda donde escribía los nombres, teléfonos y números de identificación de toda la familia. Rápidamente, Pensé que podía encontrar el contacto de mi papá allí. After Ana María's grandmother died, her things had been put into a trunk that was now in Ana María's house, so she found the address book easily. Now it was a matter of finding her father's name. Era un cuaderno azul, pequeño y de cuero. Y ahí estaba su nombre. Luis Carlos García su número de identificación y un número de teléfono. No lo podía creer. Su contacto siempre estuvo en mi propia casa. When Inés saw Ana María with the address book in hand, she asked her daughter what she was looking for. Yo le dije que encontré el contacto de mi papá. Ana María was ready to make the call and speak to her father for the first time, when she realized her mother was in tears. Con voz firme me dijo, Ana María, Luis Carlos García, no es tu papá. Wait, what? Ana María thought to herself, that man is not my father? Mi madre me dijo que se sentía mal por no decirme la verdad antes. Ana María was shocked. She had never met her father, but at least she had known his name. Mi mamá se quedó en silencio. Fueron solo unos minutos, pero para mí fue como una eternidad. Yo pensé en muchas cosas, incluso que era adoptada. 
Si él no es mi papá, entonces ¿quién es? Pensé. At this point, Ana María started crying too. Inés was clearly anxious about saying anything else. But Ana María held firm, saying she wasn't going anywhere until her mother told her the whole truth. Ella me dijo que esto no era algo fácil de explicar. Me pidió un tiempo para pensar. Se veía muy confusa y triste. So a couple of days later, after hours of silence and worried glances over the dinner table, Inés finally revealed the name of Ana María's real father, José Leonel Ortiz. Era la primera vez que escuchaba ese nombre y me sentía extraña. Pero también sentí que mi madre me estaba abriendo una nueva ventana para poder saber de dónde yo venía. As the days passed, Ana María learned more about her mother's relationships with these two men, Luis Carlos García and José Leonel Ortiz. Inés had been married to Luis Carlos for six years. That part was true. She had loved him deeply, but the relationship didn't work out. Poco tiempo después de divorciarse de él, ella conoció a José Leonel en un restaurante gracias a un amigo. Poco después de empezar a ser novios, ellos supieron que mi mamá iba a tener un bebé. In a matter of days, José Leonel asked her to move in with him. They bought a crib and set up a room for the new baby, Ana María. Mi mamá me dijo que José Leonel tenía una personalidad difícil, pero ella sabía que él la amaba. Además, con él, ella se sentía menos sola después de su divorcio. José Leonel had served in the military before he met Inés. He didn't spend a long time enlisted, but it was during the worst years of the armed conflict in Colombia. Parece que esa experiencia lo cambió y empezó a tomar alcohol frecuentemente. He went to college after his time in the army and became a lawyer, like Inés, and an economist. He led a normal life, except for his growing alcohol abuse. Generalmente, cuando él bebía, estaba furioso, gritaba y se volvía loco. Y bebía siempre que tenía la oportunidad de hacerlo. One day, he came home after a few too many, and he hit Inés. Era la primera vez que golpeaba a mi mamá. Y ella se fue. José Leonel never tried to get Inés back. So, when Ana María was born, her mother decided to register her ex-husband, Luis Carlos García, as Ana María's biological father. Después de escuchar esta historia, amé a mi mamá más que nunca. Ana María couldn't believe how hard her mother's pregnancy had actually been and how strong Inés had to be to care for her baby on her own. Pero después de saber toda la verdad sobre mi verdadero padre, todavía tenía ganas de conocerlo. So Ana María asked Inés to help her find José Leonel, her actual biological father. The only contact Inés had was with his brother and some nephews. Los busqué y me dijeron que ellos tampoco tenían contacto con él. Su hermano decía que mi padre necesitaba estar solo y beber alcohol después de su tiempo con los militares. En un país como Colombia, ir a la guerra es duro y todos terminan siendo víctimas de alguna manera. In the end, Ana María found José Leonel in the most mundane way imaginable when a new phone book was delivered to the house. Mi mamá lo abrió y buscó su nombre. Y ahí estaba. Era él. El teléfono y la dirección de su oficina estaban allí. Por fin lo encontraba, dos años después de empezar a buscarlo. Inés warned Ana María that her father might not want to see her. But she had just turned 18, 
and felt like an adult. She felt ready to face whatever came when she met her father. No importaba si él no me quería ver. Yo quería verlo a él. When Ana Maria reached the office, she found José Leonel's name. She was buzzed in, and once she was in front of his door, her nerves almost made her turn back. Sin embargo, pensé que tenía que seguir porque podía ser el día más importante de mi vida. She knocked once, twice, and then when the door opened, there he was. She looked him over in a matter of seconds. Era bajo, tenía la barba un poco gris, las manos pequeñas, y llevaba un vendaje en su brazo. Como yo, también él tenía una marca cerca de la boca, en el lado izquierdo de su cara. Ana María looked him straight in the eyes and said, I'm looking for José Leonel Ortiz. Soy yo, respondió él. Yo tenía ganas de llorar, pero continué. Hace 18 años, usted conoció a María Inés Rojas, y yo soy su hija, la hija de ustedes dos. When he heard Ana María say that she was his daughter, there was a silence that seemed to last forever. Él vino y me dio la mano. Me preguntó si mi mamá seguía cocinando tan bien como cuando estaba con él. He admitted that he had wondered about her for years, but he didn't explain why he had never dared to look for her. Yo creía que lo primero que iba a hacer era explicarme por qué no me buscó para conocerme. He didn't offer an explanation, and his attitude made it clear that for the most part, José Leonel was indifferent. Ana María felt humiliated. José Leonel estaba ocupado y tuvo que terminar la visita, pero me ofreció vernos en otro momento. Despite her disappointment with their first meeting, Ana María agreed to see him again. Escribió mi número de teléfono en su agenda y nos dijimos adiós. Fue el abrazo más frío y sin emoción que he sentido en mi vida. After that, they talked on the phone regularly, usually about trivial things. The second time they met, he took her out to eat and gave her presents, mostly clothes and materials for school. She was studying to become a photographer. Yo empecé a sentir que él quería ganarme con dinero. Pero los regalos no sirven para eso. Nada podía cambiar el vacío que yo sentía. Ana María felt that she had gotten what she wanted. She had seen her father's face. She knew what he was like, how he walked, and how he spoke. There was nothing more she could ask of him. Yo pensaba que podíamos seguir de esta manera. Yo no necesitaba más. Y tampoco pensé que él iba a transformarse de pronto en el padre que nunca fue. Pero un día sucedió algo que cambió todo. They were in José Leonel's office. Ana María had recently received the ID card that Colombians get when they turn 18. And José Leonel asked to see how the photo had turned out. Cuando se lo pasé, miró mi apellido y dijo, ¿Qué vamos a hacer con esto? It was the third time they were meeting, and he was already asking Ana María to change her apellido, or last name, to his. Me dijo que ese cambio podía servirme económicamente. Tal vez él hablaba sobre algún dinero familiar. Yo estaba enojada. Sentí que él intentaba comprarme. She responded harshly to him, saying she felt like he was trying to buy her love. She never imagined that this would cause him to disappear, that he would dodge her calls when she tried to contact him again. But that's what happened. Cuando pude hablar con él, me dijo, olvídate de mí. Y bueno, como yo crecí sin conocerlo, 
volví a vivir mi vida sin él. So she made peace with her father's wish to leave him alone. Ten years later, in March of 2018, Ana Maria learned that José Leonel, her biological father, had been in an accident and passed away. Estaba triste, pero sentía que no podía hacer más. Lo busqué e intenté ser su hija, incluso después de saber que él no me quería. Además, al recibir la noticia de su muerte, yo ya era otra persona. Me sentía bien porque en 2016 recibí un mensaje que me cambió la vida. That year, 2016, Ana María received an unlikely message through her Flickr account. It was Luis Carlos García, the man her mother had been married to before she was born. The same man whose last name Ana María carried her whole life as her own. Él me dijo que siempre quiso conocerme. After all, he wrote, legally, she was his daughter, even though they weren't related biologically. Gracias a los mensajes con Luis Carlos, empecé a llenar otros vacíos en mi historia. During Ana María's first months of life, Luis Carlos didn't know that his ex had gotten pregnant by another man so soon after they had separated. But when Ana María was about to turn one, Luis Carlos sent Ana María's mother a gift. Era un libro que tenía por título Cuida a tu hijo, un manual para madres sin experiencia. Creo que algún amigo en común le dijo que su ex esposa tenía una hija. But after sending the book, Luis Carlos never contacted Inés again. Finalmente, decidió buscarme cuando era adulta porque él no pudo tener hijos y recordó que yo llevaba su nombre. So Luis Carlos figured he could look her up, and there she was, on Flickr, still using the last name Garcia. They exchanged messages for a couple of weeks, and then Luis Carlos invited Ana Maria to visit him in Medellín. She accepted, but this time, she didn't tell her mother. Y esa es la historia de cómo un día, casi 20 años después de empezar a buscar a mi primer padre, me subí a un avión para ver a mi segundo padre. She figured if the meeting didn't go well, she could just go straight back to Bogotá and go on with her life as it was before. Cuando nos encontramos en el aeropuerto, lo observé con atención. No era muy alto. Tenía barba, lentes redondos, usaba sandalias y llevaba un sombrero. Tenía el aspecto de un intelectual. Vi algo especial en sus ojos. Luis Carlos invited her to join him for dinner at a restaurant nearby. He asked her about how she had decided to become a photographer. Yo trabajaba en una agencia de noticias en Colombia. Y también, por varios años, fui fotógrafa de un periódico nacional. Fue a través de mis fotos que Luis Carlos empezó a conocerme. Their conversation was immediately full of trust and empathy. He told her, I can't promise you anything, but I'll do all I can to be a father to you. Al día siguiente, fuimos al jardín botánico a caminar. At the entrance to the garden, they were asked to present their IDs and whether they were related. They didn't hesitate to say they were father and daughter. Nuestros documentos tenían el mismo apellido. Pero además, sentíamos que esa era la relación que queríamos construir. Ana María felt at ease with Luis Carlos. The time she spent with him passed quickly. They had fun. And she didn't want to leave his side. This feeling was brand new for her. Sabíamos que no éramos familia. Pero descubrimos que teníamos muchas cosas en común. Nos gusta la fotografía cocinar, leer, viajar y la naturaleza. Two years have passed since that first meeting. Yo ahora vivo en Australia y Luis Carlos sigue en Medellín, pero nos mantenemos siempre en contacto. 
Before she moved to Australia, she finally told her mother that she had reconnected with Luis Carlos. Me preocupaba su reacción. Pensaba que ella podía estar furiosa. Para ella fue una sorpresa, pero estaba feliz. Ella celebró que por fin yo tengo el padre que tantos años estuve buscando. This story was written by Sally Palomino, a Colombian freelance journalist based in Berlin, as told to her by Ana Maria Garcia. If you liked this story, we'd love for you to share it with others. At podcast.duolingo.com, you can find a transcript of this story and all of the other episodes. Subscribe at Apple Podcasts or your favorite listening app so you never miss one. With over 300 million users, Duolingo is the world's leading language learning platform and the most downloaded education app in the world. Duolingo believes in making education free, fun, and accessible to everyone. To join, download the app today or find out more at duolingo.com. I'm the executive producer, Martina Castro. Gracias por escuchar.